Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you kind of an all-in-one guide to saving money online and not getting screwed over by bad deals. So we're going to be talking about a variety of different sites online where you can get good deals at and that you can also use to compare the prices on different sites so that you're sure that you are getting basically the best bang for your buck. So uh, we're going to be starting on Amazon. Uh, everybody's probably heard of Amazon.com. It's a marketplace where Amazon sells a lot of stuff, but also third-party sellers sell their products. I'm not going to go into too much more detail about that specifically, but on Amazon they have a useful feature called their wish lists. So if you have logged into Amazon and you find an item you like, but perhaps it's at a price that's a little bit high, for instance, any video game that has just come out usually sells for $60, but after a few months, usually something like six or so, it may drop to $30 or even $20 for that game. So one of the ways to know about that, or to actually uh, just buy it later when it's at a better price, is to add it to the wish list. So you can see here I have some uh, random items, a bunch of hiking gear. And uh, for items that actually have dropped to a lower price than when you originally added it to the list, it'll notify you. And uh, you can see for this hat here that it was originally $17, but currently it's going for $11, a 35% price drop over the original price. So you can see it's not just for things that lose their value initially. Uh, sometimes the price fluctuates a lot on different items, or they decide they just want to uh, basically get rid of their inventory for those items. Uh, in any case, for whatever reason, the item is dropping in price. This is a good way to basically uh, just hold on, hold it in the back of your mind and then to snag it up when you see it at a much lower price. So here you would save 6 or $7 just by waiting a few months in order to buy that hat. Um, okay, so next, if you want to go a step beyond that, there is a site called Camel, 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 and I think they might have some plugins for this as well. Um, you log in, you create an account on their website, and then you add various items, uh, basically anything you want off of Amazon, and it will keep track of the price of that uh, item, basically in their internal databases. Um, and as time goes on, the price is going to fluctuate, and it'll show you, uh, basically on this price, the, uh, the price watches page, it'll show you the current price of the item and the difference between that and the desired price. So you can set desired prices for each item, basically um, how cheap do you want it to get to before you're ready to make a purchase, really? Um, and then when it, if it ever does reach that desired price, you can have it automatically email you to let you know that that price has been reached and it's at the right point for you to go ahead and buy it. Now, if we click on any of the items like this uh, portable solar charger thing here, um, you can basically see the entire price history. Uh, camel, camel, camel. I mean, I don't know exactly how it works in the back end, but uh, basically they ping Amazon, they collect the data, they store the price, and uh, you can compare how the price has been over the last few months, and uh, hopefully it'll go ahead and load here. Okay, there we go. So price history, we can see right now it's actually at its highest price of all time, um, but there was a point where it reached down to $36.23. So you can see how the price of these items, even if they're not something digital where like it has no hard real value, that the price fluctuates over time. So you really want to buy it when it's like this, save 25% on it, and in a way, I mean, I couldn't blame you for it, but in, unless it's an impulse buy, you're kind of a sucker to pay the whole $46 for it that you see up there. So, Camel, 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 great tool for Amazon specifically. Um, so, we can move on to eBay next, which is an auction-based website, another one of the ones that pretty much everybody should have heard of, and I think they're actually owned by the same company as Amazon now. On eBay, um, the difference is really that most of the items here are being sold by individuals or companies that specialize in eBay selling, and that a lot of the items are used and the prices are going to kind of vary a lot more. It's not a retail store, it's someone who has one of these items to sell. Uh, and it can be all kinds of things. I think you can even buy uh, like houses or land on it if you really wanted to go that far. Um, so here let's do something where the, the price would often vary quite a lot. So 
Uh, that would be buying vehicles. So let's just go with like, I don't know, a uh, Ford E-150 or a F-150. F-150 is a, a truck, a big uh, standard Ford pickup truck. And you can find cars on all different kinds of prices on eBay. Now, I wouldn't necessarily go and buy a car specifically here because it's kind of hard to justify buying a car until you've seen it in person. Uh, but just for instance, um, so uh, you can filter a lot of things for these cars. Um, so let's say less than 150,000 miles, we're going for like a used car here. I, I don't know, uh, $10,000 maybe. And you can compare these prices, um, open up a page. And what I would say specifically about eBay is the more details that a seller is giving about the product, uh, kind of the better off you're going to be. So here, it's kind of sketchy. You have some of the uh, auto check stuff here where, oh, okay, it has a clean title, the odometer checks out. But uh, the user is not really giving a lot of information about the car. It's kind of about the equivalent of a Craigslist ad. ad. Uh, Craigslist, uh, for people who are generally in the U.S., is another great site for um, buying stuff off of other people. But you do have to be careful about that. Um, always making sure that you get as much information as possible from the different users. Um, but yeah, you can kind of price check between sites like eBay, sites like Craigslist, and I, I would really look at as many different items uh, of the category you're looking at to really get a sense of what it's worth. Because um, when it comes to things like automobiles, some people will put the price way higher than it really is worth. Like, someone might want, like, $5,000, $6,000 for a car that has well over 200,000 miles on the odometer, and it might not even be in good condition, which in most cases, for most vehicles, is going to be kind of bullshit. You don't want to pay that much money for something that's just going to break down. Um, yeah, so I don't want to get too much more into car buying stuff there, but uh, do look at the description of the thing you're buying. Uh, that's what I really want you to take away here. If the person can't even use proper English, if they format it horribly, if they're not telling you what you need to know, skip them. And also, uh, check their um, the user feedback rating. So here this guy's got 53, uh, 53 feedback items. I, I think that's what the score stands for, and it's 100% positive. So it's not really like a, a main seller on eBay, but it's someone who hasn't run into any issues yet. Uh, the more feedback, the more positive feedback, though, the more you can trust a seller. And the same thing goes with Amazon as well. Look at the seller. Is the seller trustworthy? Is he giving you enough information? And definitely compare across all the different sites you can. If, if you want to buy a car, check Craigslist and eBay and maybe even go to some of those used car dealerships. Um, well, not that I would necessarily recommend that, but it couldn't hurt just to see the price. Okay, so let's move on to buying things like video games. Digital items don't really have a actual value to them on the, basically the internet. It's a download that you're really buying, or the rights to download an item. So for a digital download item, the real value of it can drop as low as zero dollars, zero cents, and that's one of the reasons why... Uh, well, different companies would be so quick to be like, here, have some free premium keys for our product, even though we sell it for $60, I'll just give it to you for free. Because it's not really worth $60 in a lot of cases. So it's only worth $60 to the right customer. So uh, G2A is a marketplace for Steam keys. Steam specifically being a, uh, a video game digital rights management platform for video games. And on Steam, the prices of those keys are going to generally be a lot higher than what you see here. Um, Steam games often go on sale for 50%, even up to 75% of what they normally sell for. So a game that uh, says like it's $40 retail, if you buy it in the right month, would only go for like $10 even on Steam. So people who buy, uh, buy keys or get keys from other sources... Sometimes they'll go here and they'll just sell it to you for a lot less. So before you go buy a game on Steam, if it's not even on discount, checking places like G2A 
is a good idea. But then once again, because it's like a user to user, um, and, and yeah, there are people who make their living off of selling keys on sites like this. Uh, always check the feedback of the person selling it. So Grand Theft Auto V, I'm pretty sure that goes for like $60 on Steam by default, uh, probably also in the store. You can see um, for the users that have a truckload of sales and they're all positive, probably trustworthy enough to go for them because that means they sold a ton of items, which basically means it's their business, and the feedback is all positive, so you're less likely to get screwed. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Be wary of anybody who does not have any feedback yet, because those are the ones who are going to be most likely to screw you over. You know, if, if someone doesn't have a review yet, that means that there's no, nothing to say that they're trustworthy or not yet. Um, so, for comparison, here on Steam, Ark Survival Evolved, it's a game that uh, does go for $30 right now, but you can see it's nine dollars and thirty cents for a global steam cd key on g2a so you could just go buy it for thirty dollars on steam but um if you can buy it for nine you're kind of getting screwed there right now arc survival evolved specifically uh the reason why the keys are going for so cheap or one of the reasons is because there was a point in time when these keys were being sold on a site called humble bundle as uh, part of a greater package i think it was the humble monthly month and uh, basically, everybody who paid twelve dollars a month got "quote unquote" a hundred dollars plus in Steam CD keys. Now, not everybody who bought that bundle is going to want uh, the game, so a lot of people go and sell it here. Some people might buy multiple bundles to sell multiple keys. Now, probably that goes against someone's terms of service somewhere um, in terms of being the seller, but uh, that's just not really how the internet works. Does anyone really follow the rules? Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's move on from there. So, Humble Bundle is actually a really good site for following the proper channels, getting the, the CD keys. So, uh, although you can get things at way discounted prices here, that doesn't mean that it's, it's wrong or anything. They have permission from all of the software vendors, all of the game vendors, but it really does demonstrate how valuable a digital item can be if you're not just going and paying the full retail price for it. So, let's see, these these different programs, uh, of which I haven't tested these really, so I don't know about the quality, um, but usually stuff on Humble Bundle is pretty decent. Um, the retail price, $30, $40, and $30. So this is a pay-what-you-want program. If you pay a dollar, you get these three, which is already a dollar for $100 of stuff. If you pay $8, you get another... $120 of stuff or something like that. And if you pay $15 or more, you throw on like another $100. So for $15, you get $300 of programs, quote unquote. They might not be the ones you're looking for. But let's say you just wanted a VPN and you, you didn't have a free premium VPN. Uh, you can get a year license and a bunch of extra stuff by paying significantly less by using uh, sites like this, bundle sites. And it's not just with video games. Um, there's actually bundle sites now for uh, e-learning courses. If you wanted to become like a web developer or something like that, tons of courses out there that get heavily discounted for things like this. And on top of that, um, anytime you do go searching for things like that, Google if there's a coupon for it. Um, there's quite a few sites out there right now that can just get you coupons that you can apply for basically anything you're buying online. And when it's a digital item, often those coupons are going to be 50, 75% off. So couldn't hurt to take a look. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so let's talk about another thing. Uh, just price comparison in general. Um, if you want to be as smart as possible, making your money go for as far as it can go online, then you want to use some kind of price comparison tools. Uh, when it comes to flights and hotels and that kind of thing, there's a few different sites out there. Uh, the one I've been using is Mamondo um, Kayak is also pretty good, and they compare different sites simultaneously. So it's like a search engine for uh, plane tickets, kind of. So let's say we were going from Dallas to Concord, one-way ticket, economy class, and May 17th. So we'll search here. And you'll see that it'll just kind of pull up all the different flights um, at the airport. Um, 
from many different sites at once. And, and these different airline sites, they do vary in their price quite a bit. Um, <laughs> okay, that was actually a really bad example, apparently. Uh, maybe Detroit or something. Oh, airport's Detroit. Okay, looks like we'll get something this time. Um, okay, so you saw the initial result was like $122. Uh, Delta Airlines got United Airlines knocking it down to 96 uh, oh, euros. Maybe we changed that to dollars. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. Whatever currency you're working with. Uh, Spirit Airlines going for as much as $50. Um, now, of course, uh, the airline that is the cheapest might not be the one you want to use because it could be not great in the reputation. Um, they do tend to have ratings for these different airlines over here. So United, sadly, does not really have a great reputation currently. There was some stuff in the news that kind of hurt that. Um, but yeah, this is it's tools like this, not just Momondo, but tools like this are a really great way to save money when you're doing things like this. Um, so let's just say you did not care which airline you were using, and you could just go with Spirit Airlines. Whereas before you would have paid, you would have just gone to Delta and you would have paid like a hundred euros or something like that. You just saved about 40, 50% on your airline ticket. So you can really see how that's an easy way to save money. And the fact that the search engines basically figure it out automatically for you is amazing. It minimal effort required on your part, probably one of the easiest ways to save money. Okay, so next we're going to talk about um, just general price check sites. So places like savings.com slash price jump or uh, price grabber are a few options you have available, which will compare multiple different sites and see if um, basically whatever site you were thinking of buying it on has the lowest price. So does Amazon have the lowest price? Because Amazon probably the biggest online retailer at this point. So let's see, for this... Uh, this goes long handle digging shovel, pretty random item. Um, we can price check all the different stores. So this is the Amazon price at the moment. And let's see on any other stores, is it the same price? Um, okay, Data Bazaar, it's more expensive. You can buy it on Newegg, wow, that's weird. Um, Cause Newegg is like a computer store. But it looks like actually at this one site I've never heard of, CPO Commerce, that they have a lower price on that shovel. So I'm going to open that page up and we can take a look. Um, all right. So it does look like they have a lower price on this specific shovel. So by doing things like that, you can save a couple dollars. Though one thing I would keep in mind is that uh, if you have something like Amazon Prime, you may still in the end get a better deal because you don't have to pay shipping. Um, on many items using sites like Amazon. So just keep that in mind. The final price does matter. Do you have to pay an extra $5 for shipping? Um, if not, like if you can get free shipping on items like this, then hey, you could save $2 just like that. So uh, that's pretty much all the tips I have for you guys um, when it comes to shopping online. I would just say, uh, in summary, whoever you're buying it from, make sure they have a good reputation. Check the description. Um, is it well written? Do they detail the things you need to know? Um, and if, if it's something that's kind of technical, like a computer, uh, you can also check some review sites, get comparisons on the items, uh, especially on sites that have user-to-user -user sales. Really be wary of the, of the seller's reputation. Uh, price check everything, everywhere. Just because it's on Amazon doesn't mean it has the best price of all time. Although many things do have good prices on Amazon. Um, and when it comes to digital items, know that the retail price that they're selling it for really is meaningless. Um, often, if you look around for deals, coupons, anything like that, you can get things way cheaper than what basically the retail price would imply the value of the product is. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching this video on how to save money online and not to get ripped off. I hope that this video helps you guys to save a little cash out there and get better products in the future. So with that, I will see you guys later and hopefully I'll see you in my future video content as well.